Hello again, first graders. Thank you so much for coming back to the second video of this week. My name is Ms. Boyle and you are an awesome first grader. And let's go ahead and get started and get back into this book that we started reading in the last video of Velociraptors. So remember last video, we started reading this book and we did some really great wondering and some really great learning. So let's start off with this book of, written by Kate Riggs. What did we learn about velociraptors? I want you to go ahead and think it, and then you know what I'm gonna say. Say it out loud, whether it's to a real human or an animal or imaginary. What did you learn about velociraptors in the book? Did you say something? I learned that they had uh, feathers, which was pretty crazy, and that they were basically like kind of like birds but really fierce, scary birds that I'm glad lived many, many years ago. So what did you, did you learn some cool stuff? I think we definitely learned some cool stuff. So today we're gonna continue to learn about velociraptors and we're gonna learn about velociraptors by paying attention to the text features. Now a text features are all the things that are in a book, like the words, which we know, but pictures are also a text feature. I know pictures are definitely a text feature that you've been using that help us learn information. There's all sorts of other text features. So today and tomorrow, we are going to explore some of those text features and get to understand them a little bit better and learn what do they teach us? Why is that text feature important? How does it help us learn information about the book? So our target is learn information from text features. So yesterday we talked about the glossary, that's a text feature, and we talked about the captions, also a text feature. Today we're gonna talk about another text feature, and this text feature is called the index. So this is the index right here on the bottom. Can you see it? So that's the index. And you might be thinking, Ms. Boyle, that's just a glossary. That's just a list of words. That must be the glossary. You already talked about the glossary. Not the glossary. The index is a little bit different. Yes, it is a list of words, but you'll notice in the glossary, it gave the definitions, what those words mean. In the index, it just says the word, and then it gives page numbers. So what an index does is it tells you what page you can find different topics. So some of the topics in this book, some of the things this book mentions, Asia, deserts, eyes, feathers, fossils, Museum of Natural History, name, uh, Henry Fairfield Osborne. So there's all these different things that this book talks about. So let's say that we wanted to learn more about the velociraptor's eyes. So we could look in the index and we could find eyes by alphabet. And there it is, eyes. And I go side over here and it says 11, 23. So that means that it is on, information about the eyes is on page 11, but also on page 23. So let's check it out. Let's see what it says about eyes. So I'm gonna go to page 11. And here it says, um, it ran quickly, is that right? Oh, I read the wrong page. Ms. Boyle even messes up. <laughs> I was confused. I read the thing about deserts. That's why you gotta pay attention, man. All right, there, eyes are actually on page seven. I was very confused when I turned to page 11. It didn't talk about eyes at all. Let's go to page seven about eyes. So page seven. Ah, there we go. Now we're talking about the eyes. It says right here, it had large eyes on the side of its head like a bird. So there we can kind of see, we understand, oh, those were their eyes. And we use the index to find that. So let's look at some of the other topics in the index. And I'm gonna hold it up close to my screen so that you can see it really well. And I want you to see where would I go if I wanted to know more about the size of the velociraptor. So here it is, can you see it nice and well? Yeah, there we go. All right, where would I go if I wanted to find out about the size? Do you see it? <laughs> yep, what page? Say it out loud. Did you say page nine? I hope you said page nine because indeed that's where it says size. And 
I can go to page nine. And sure enough, there's the page that talks about its size. 33 pounds, three to four feet tall. Kind of get to know its size. So the index is a really great way if you want to learn something specific about what the book's about. And you can go use that index. It's a text feature that a lot of nonfiction books have. So I encourage you, when you're reading, see if your book has a index. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read this book again. And then we are going to talk about it. Velociraptor was a theropod dinosaur. It lived from 75 to 70 million years ago. The name Velociraptor means swift thief. Velociraptor was a fast running meat eater. It had about 80 sharp teeth and it was always ready to eat prey. It had large eyes on the sides of its head like a bird. This helped Velociraptor see all around. As I'm reading, I want you to pay special attention to any parts I say that describe what the Velociraptor looks like. It's gonna come in handy later. An adult Velociraptor weighed only about 33 pounds. It stood three to four feet tall. Velociraptor used speed to make up for its small size. The predator chased its larger prey at speeds up to 40 miles per hour. Velociraptor lived in dry deserts. There was not much water in the deserts. Velociraptor stayed on the move during the day. It ran quickly over the hot sand with its four toed feet. The small horned dinosaur Protoceratops was one of Velociraptor's favorite meals. Protoceratops was a plant eater, but Velociraptor also hunted other meat eaters. It ate fast running meat eaters such as Oviraptor and Gallimimus. Velociraptor spent most of the time looking for food. Sometimes Velociraptor traveled in packs or groups. Velociraptor died out about 70 million years ago. Five million years later, all the dinosaurs disappeared. Scientists know about Velociraptor because they have studied fossils. Fossils are the remains of living things that died long ago. Many fossils of Velociraptor have been found on other on the continent have been found on the continent of Asia. The first one was found in 1923. Paleontologists are people who study dinosaurs. Henry Fairfield Osborne was the paleontologist who named Velociraptor. He called it Swift Thief because he thought it stole other dinosaurs' eggs for food. People used to think that Velociraptor was like a lizard and dragged its tail on the ground. Now people think that it was covered with fuzz or feathers and was more like a bird that does not fly. But scientists still study fossils of Velociraptor. There are more things to learn about this Swift Thief. All right, so remember when I told you to pay special attention to what the Velociraptor looked like? That's because I want us to really make a picture in our mind about Velociraptor. So do you remember some of the things that they describe Velociraptor? I want you to say them out loud. See how many things you can list about a Velociraptor. Go ahead, count on your fingers as you say them out loud. How many things did you come up with? I actually wrote a list earlier of all the things that they told us about Velociraptor. And I wrote what Velociraptors might have looked like. And I wrote sharp teeth, eyes on the side of its head, three to four feet tall, walked on two legs, four toes, might have had feathers, might have looked like a bird. Wow, did you come up with some of those? Yeah, so that's kind of the idea. So we're gonna do something. We're gonna make our own text feature. So when we read last week, if you watched the video with me, we read this book, remember, Throw Your Tooth on the Roof by Shelby, Eel, Shelby B. Beeler and illustrated by G. Brian Cars. And we looked at this diagram. Remember, a diagram is a special picture that teaches and it has the labels. Well, this book does not have a diagram. It has some great pictures, but it does not have a diagram of a velociraptor. So today, I, want to show you the diagram that I drew of a Velociraptor. Now keep in mind, I am a teacher, not an artist, but I did my very best, because that's all we can do is do our best. So I filled in this sheet of my diagram of a Velociraptor. So you can see it's a diagram because I've got those labels. I said feathers, sharp claws, four toes, sharp teeth, remember 80 sharp teeth. 
And this is the diagram that I use because diagram is another really helpful text feature that helps teach us about the book. So you might have gotten a sheet that looks like this printed out and it has, my book had these text features and I wrote it about velociraptors and it had a glossary. We talked about that yes, or last time. It had captions, we also talked about that last time. And then today we talked about the index. It did not have a diagram, but I did mine on. So I want you today to do your 15 minutes of independent reading on a nonfiction book if you have one handy. And then after your 15 minutes of independent reading, you are going to complete this sheet right here. If you don't have one, of course, plain piece of paper works just fine too. So you're gonna write the title of the book, and then I want you to write what text features your book had. We have glossary, captions, index, or diagram. And then this is where it gets kind of fun. I want you to draw a diagram using information you learn from your book. Don't forget to use labels. So this was my diagram about my book. I want you to draw a diagram about your book. So maybe your book is about another animal and you could draw that animal with labeling the different parts. Or maybe your book is about type of building and you could label that. That's a diagram too. Maybe your book is about the earth. You could label parts about the earth. There are so many great things that you could do diagrams about and I know that you can find a book where you can draw a diagram. All right, first graders, that was that. Thank you as always for watching. It's been a real pleasure. Enjoy your 15 minutes of reading. Have fun with those diagrams. Go ahead and add colors, make it as great and as wonderful as you want. And until then, I will see you next time. Thanks, bye first graders.